Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. You probably just heard me clear my throat because I'm not good at unmuting the sound and starting the show. Welcome to Founder of the Day, where we're really good at starting the show. Hi, Troy. I see you there. Anyone jump, 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 jump. Just jumping in. Don't have my words behind me, but we're about to play trivia, so I'll let the questions do most of the talking, apparently. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Thank you for all your support, uh, for joining me in my ever uh, adventurous quest to study the American Revolution and adjust my shirt. You know, I was ready like an hour ago for the video, and I was like, all right, let's go downstairs, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, oh, I got ready too early to do trivia. So. <laughs> Here we are. We're nice and ready. I hope I'm not too loud. I'm going to turn myself down just a little bit. Don't want to crickle crackle your ears off. Um, People always roll in a little bit late. I'm going to start asking questions. We have a lot of questions about the Declaration of Independence today. That'll be a lot of fun. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, the first few cabinets. So that'll be a good time. Uh, anyone popping in, let me know you're here. Troy, like I said, already told me he's here. Uh, we don't want to ask too many questions before people show up. Although people do pop in and pop out along the way now for those of you who don't know troy i don't recall if you were here last week or not but we did actually name all 243 uh members of the exec uh legislative branch of the revolutionary government last week this week we're gonna do it again i i feel you know obviously we've worked a long time to hit 243 but as, the rule for rubik's cubes is you have to do it two out of three times and get your averages so we're going to do that. We're going to see if we can hit it either this week or next week and make it official. And from there, maybe we'll change it up. We'll see where we go from there. Uh, like I said, anyone will pop it in late. Let us know you're here because uh, we're going to start playing trivia. And that's enough. Yeah, sorry, Troy. I didn't. I thought you might have missed it. Unfortunately, I don't think Matt was here either. So tissues and teardrops. We're going to do it again this week so you can participate this time. Uh, a few other people are here. No one's given me the signal they've arrived yet. So... Anyone pop it in, throw your name down in the comments because we're just getting started. I want to know you're here. Don't want to leave you out if we're waiting for your guests. Again, my shirt bothered me. Not sure why it's hanging low. Uh, and we're going to ask some questions. <laughs> Let's keep going. So we are starting off this week actually with our declaration of uh, our, um, you can't see from the light, but it's the cards uh, from this trivia game I have instead of the individual quiz cards. It is declaration of independence theme. So let's start off with a fairly easy one. Delegates from how many colonies signed the Declaration of Independence? I'll remind you, the Declaration of Independence is America's founding document. And we want to know how many colonies signed the Declaration of Independence, or, or sent had delegates sign it. Anyone pop it in? Welcome. We just started trivia. You're not too late. There's really no scorekeeping. We're kind of playing together, kind of playing against each other. Depends what game. And see here, everyone's rolling in. We just got started. This is the first question. Nice and easy. Uh, if you're popping in, let us know you're here so I don't skip you while we're answering the questions. I want everyone to get a chance to answer. I also noticed I'm about four and a half seconds ahead of you guys this week instead of the usual two or three, so I apologize for that. I will try and be patient. Again, this is a pretty easy question. I know at least Troy's here. <laughs> um, you can't be more than one or two off. It would be very difficult to be more than one or two off, so don't sweat it too much. It's not a trick question. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Troy, 13... But didn't New York come late to the party? Ah, yes, Troy, very well played. But the question is signed. How many delegate? How many colonies signed the Declaration of Independence? And yeah, since no one else seems to, other people here don't want to play with you, Troy. So we're going to go down and pop it up. Yes, 13 colonies had delegates that signed the Declaration of Independence. Uh, what you're saying about with New York is the vote on independence. And we're going to get a little into this later. I don't want to spoil any later questions. But the vote on independence, New York abstained on July 2nd when the vote for independence was actually taken. Uh, they were waiting further instructions. They got further instructions like a week later. And I believe it was like the 13th of July, New York also uh, voted to change its abstention to a yay vote. Uh, but in August, when they signed the declaration, whammy, New York did sign the Declaration of Independence. So, hi. Your answer was too. Okay, well, Colonel Panic, welcome to the team. Uh, I believe you're new here. That's fine. They should be pretty easy questions. Uh, Misfit, you are Colonel Panic now. Well, welcome back. Now you're not a stranger anymore. We know who you are here. Tell me, Colonel, on what date was the Declaration of Independence formally adopted? Now, while you're answering that, I do want to note. Uh, from here on out, I am just, I just wrote declaration because writing declaration of independence, 
on every single thing is a little wordy. <laughs> so I, when I say declaration, I mean of independence. You know, we're having fun here. I don't want to be, don't want to take up too much room on the screen for it. Anyone just popping in, let us know you're here so I can wait for your answers. I do see an answer coming through. On what date was the Declaration of Independence formally adopted? And that's a key word there, formally. I see Droy, uh, Droy, Troy uh, coming up with July 2nd, waiting on Misfit to see if she's going to answer under the new name. <laughs> we'll find out. And while we wait, I'm going to pop up the answer. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Malice, Malisapino. Is that how you pronounce it? I never even thought to pronounce your last name, Troy. Malisapino. I mispronounced your last name, and you got the answer wrong. I'm sorry, friend. It's July 4th. So on July 2nd, 1776, the uh, uh, independence was adopted. They voted to approve independence, and that should be... The 4th of July should be the 2nd of July. That's the date John Adams famously thought there would be parades and celebration. But the declaration itself is was formally adopted July 4th. And that's when we get the date because it's uh, signed on July 4th initially. Uh, basically what happened, they approve independence on July 2nd. Okay, big deal. Now, Thomas Jefferson had written this draft a little while ago. So let's, uh, should, what do we think of it? And then they spent two days actually editing out a quarter of the original document. And then on July 4th, they approved the, they formally adopted that document. So fair enough. Your question, your answer is wise, Troy. It just doesn't fit this exact scheme. This is a fun question. Wish more people were here for it. Not a lot of people joining us today, but that's okay. We're going to do it's Friday and it's summertime. People are going to be out. True or false, the Declaration of Independence begins with the words four score and seven years ago. I see some people popping in now. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let us know you're here in the comments so I can wait for your answers on the questions. We've only done three or four questions at this point, so uh, uh, two. This is our third question. We're early on. We're not keeping score, nothing like that. It's all fun and games here, testing your knowledge. Some games we play together, some games we're kind of competing with each other. It's all fun here. We got Colonel coming in with false, saying that four score and seven years ago are not the Declaration of Independence. Okay, Colonel, well, what, what, doc what document is it? If you if you think it's false, let's let's double quiz you on this one. Troy not letting us know, probably googling it to see what her answer is. Ah, Mark Morse, nice to meet you, sir. I've not seen you come through. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you are correct. That is a Lincoln speech. Uh, it is false. That is the uh, Gettysburg Address, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the Gettysburg Address. The Declaration of Independence, if I can nerd out for a second, starts with. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary. Oh, dropped, uh, dropped you. Yes, Gettysburg Address. You're right, guys. That's all right, Troy. Welcome back in. As I was saying, the Declaration of Independence actually starts. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which connect them to another and to assume among the powers of the earth a separate but equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect toward the opinion of mankind required, they declare the causes which impel them to the separation. I'm sorry, Mark, you're new here. I don't usually lay out big, long quotes. I'm not good at quoting things except the Declaration of Independence. I assure you most of this will be quizzes. What's really interesting to me, though, as a side note about the Declaration of Independence is the, the main part of it, most of the Declaration of Independence, is a list of grievances. They're just complaining about the king. But the first three paragraphs are some of the most important uh, uh, discussions of the rights of man ever written. But the first paragraph is saying, okay, so we need to tell you guys something, world, and this is why we're writing the Declaration. And then the second two paragraphs are like the core of the Declaration. And then there's the list of grievances. And then we mutually pledge our lives, our honor, and our sage of fortune. Anyway, it is your... <laughs> yes. Anyway, sorry to bore you. Thank you for coming. Mark, hope it didn't scare you away. <laughs> Let's go on to the next question. Who were the first two people to sign the Declaration of Independence? Now, this question said who was the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence. And this, my adjustment might be a little unfair to some new people to the channel, but the second person is someone I like to reference pretty frequently. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The first person is exactly who you think it is. <laughs> so... Tell me exactly who you think the first person is, and then a bonus 30 million points to the person who guesses what I'm, who the other person to sign on July 4th, 1776. 
who were the two people who put their names on the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 71776. I can't spell out 1776, apparently. Uh, I'm holding. I'm holding. Anyone just popping in? Let us know you're here. We're just playing a few uh, questions. We're just a few questions in. We don't really keep score. Some questions, we see who gets it right. Some questions, we all play together. And we're about to start playing together in a second. So let us know you're here so I can uh, make sure I don't uh, skip you if you're trying to answer. Uh, okay. Well, Troy's saying Hancock and Adams. Those are good guesses. Uh, I will say Hancock is right. I will give you John Hancock is a correct answer. Uh, the other one is not Adams, and I'm going to let you know who it is. It is, I'm going to get the wrong, but there it is, Charles Thompson. So John Hancock is famous for the wrong reason. Everyone knows him as the guy who signed first and really big because he hated the king, right? Blah, blah, blah. No, uh, he was president of the Continental Congress, and as president, the only thing president of the Continental Congress got you is you were responsible for signing all of the outgoing documentation. But the Declaration of Independence was an official document by a new government, kind of. So they needed it attested to, which is the, basically how they used to say notarize. Charles Thompson was the only person at the Continental Congress who was not elected or sent by a government. He was hired and paid to be at the Continental Congress. He was the Secretary of Continental Congress and would be Secretary of the Continental Congress from 1774 all the way to 1789 when the new Constitution was approved. He's one of the most important laborers of the Revolutionary War, so to speak. Uh, even though he was a secretary, it wasn't like manual labor, but he, John Hancock, signed it as president, and Charles Thompson attested to it with his signature. And those went out to John Dunlap, who printed the Dunlap broadsides, and those were the names on it when it went out to George Washington with the Continental Army and the separate states and to England and France. It wouldn't be till a month later on August 2nd, 1776, that the rest of the guys started hanging out and signing it. I do want to note... Uh, Misfit, thank you for saying Bartlett. <laughs> I know it was kind of a wild guess on your part, but I love uh, I love me some Josiah Bartlett. So well played. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm going to leave this question up so I can go to the next one. Why don't we pop over to our teamwork quiz? There's not a whole lot of us hanging out playing today, but that's okay. Let's do it anyway. For those of you who are new here, first of all, I have to bring it up on my screen because I was playing around doing other research. For those of you who are new here, there it is. Um, we play some games on a website called Sporkle. It's a trivia website, and it's a ton of fun. We have a lot of fun. We're all going to play together, and what we're going to try and do is name the U.S. founding fathers who were part of early presidential cabinets. Now, this goes up to the year, technically, 17, uh, 1825. So, really, through the James Monroe presidency. So... As soon as you, as soon as I see someone start naming someone who was in the first five presidential cabinets, I will, I will hit play quiz and start typing. So I'm a few, I only need the last name and I'm a few ahead of you right now. A few, about four and a half seconds ahead of you guys. That's why I wait uh, until I see some names. Now, the first five presidents would probably be a good place to start. As you can see next to me, those are the names we're looking for. And then we can also talk about their treasurer, you know, the secretaries of treasury and of state and of that nature. I am patiently waiting here we have a smaller crowd than we usually do and uh i'm not sure not sure why there's a little bit of a delay uh we have excellent condition when it comes to the stream i'm ready and ready and willing whenever you guys want to throw it i'm gonna oh i am youtube is not receiving enough video and i have just been told by youtube that it is not great but that's okay because you guys have started answering let's see lee Absolutely. Let's John Jay. Yes, John Jay was acting Secretary of Foreign Affairs while we waited Thomas Jefferson to come home to take over. Uh, John Adams. Absolutely. Uh, Washington. Madison. Absolutely. There's at least one more president. No one said yet. Hope it's coming through all right. I see Madison there. Yeah, I apologize if there's a little bit of a uh, an error with YouTube saying the stream's not working super well, but Sometimes YouTube does this. Jefferson is right. Stoddart. Good one, Troy. It's Stoddart with the E-R-T. E-R-T. Nice. McHenry. Good one. Absolutely. James McHenry was the Secretary of War. Alexander Hamilton is pretty famous for what he's done. Uh, Burr was a Vice President of the United States of America. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, Mark, you had gotten uh, uh, John Jay 
Kind of right. He's down behind my head. There he is. There he is. It's a sneaky one because he spent most of the time with Secretary of State. Osgood. Yes. Was it Samuel Osgood? Was the first Postmaster General. Yeah. I, I believe he rented out a house to George Washington, too. Wolcott in New York. Oliver Wolcott Jr., his father, was an important founder. Um, I believe a signer of either the Declaration or the Constitution. I think the Declaration. Um, Smith. Robert Smith, not of the cure was both a Secretary of the Navy for all of Jefferson's administration and helped Madison out as Secretary of State for a while. Henry Knox, absolutely misfit. Henry Knox was first Secretary of War. This bookkeeper read enough to, well, really be, really be important to the American Revolution. <laughs> Let's see here. Who we got here? First Attorney General. This is a famous name. I will give you a hint. This person uh, went to the Constitutional Convention, gave the recommendation for the original Madison plan or Virginia plan, which they usually refer to as his last name the whole time. And uh, and then he would leave the Constitutional Convention and refuse to sign the document, despite being governor of Virginia at the time. Uh, Monroe is absolutely a president of the United States. Gary that is true. Yes, there he is. I didn't realize it went that far. He was vice president for, excuse me, uh, Mr. Monroe. Well played. Let's see. We got about a minute and a half left. We're pretty deep into this. Um, this one is a Virginian. Again, I'm going to keep coming back to the first attorney general. Virginian with a very popular last name. This uh, was postmaster general, secretary of war, secretary of state is a person I talk about pretty Frequently, he was a Federalist holdout into the Adams administration from George Washington. Very friendly with James McHenry. Bradford. Uh, Bradford. William Bradford. Look at that. That's a name I totally forgot. What do you know? Uh, oh, Troy with Clinton. Clinton was definitely a vice president for uh, 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 Thomas Jefferson. Actually, he was vice president for Ma Jefferson, then for Mad Madison. Uh, Randolph. Yes, Randolph. Edmund Randolph presented what they called the Randolph or Virginia plan at the Constitutional Convention. Didn't even sign the document. Um, let's see here. Okay, right here we have a Chief Justice of the United States of America. Uh, arguably, we already said John Jay, so other than that, the most famous Chief Justice of the United States of America. Yes, it is Pickering. It is Timothy Pickering, who was a really interesting cat. Uh, okay. Anyone popping in, watching? We got a lot more people watching than playing. You guys want to take guesses? Let me know you're here. We got 10 seconds. Again, the, probably the most famous Secret Chief Justice. Marshall, there it is. Just in the last minute, Colonel. Thank you, Colonel. There we go. Good job, team. That was great. So, what names did we miss real quick so that we learned something today? We missed Samuel Dexter, who was very briefly involved in the Thomas Jefferson government. We missed, oh, this one's tough. Albert Gallatin, look at that. He spent 13 years as Secretary of Treasury. Uh, Henry Dearborn, we missed. He's the entire Jefferson administration. And Levi Lincoln Sr., who we spoke about uh, probably a month and a half ago, who was uh, Jefferson's first term Attorney General. Uh, Henry Dearborn, Thomas Jefferson, What you will, say what you will about him. Uh, Secretary of State, James Madison, all eight years. Uh, Gallatin, Treasury, all eight years. Uh, Secretary of War, all eight years. Secretary of the Navy, all eight years. He chose a cabinet and he stuck with it. Uh, Gallatin is especially important because um, he actually sticks around into the Madison administration. So he's there longer than Thomas Jefferson as president. Uh, he was he was the Democratic-Republican version of Alexander Hamilton. He was one of the few founders who could even understand what Alexander Hamilton's assumption plan was even about. It's hard for me to talk about it because I'm not an economic genius. Uh, it was hard for most founders to understand what Hamilton was talking about. Uh, but Albert Gallatin did understand it. And that's why he was so vital to the Democratic Republican Party. And that's why the biography about him that's really, really good is uh, called Jefferson's Treasure. It's a play on treasure, but he was also a treasure. So back. Let's ask some more trivia questions. Anyone popping in, let us know you're here. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do that trivia, as they say. So, we did this question. We are going to go to the next question. Question number the fifth. One, two, three, four, fifth. Who wrote the first draft of the Declaration of Independence? Now, 
I am going to note that in these cards for this little fun game, it is for both kids and adults, and we have now moved from the student section to the scholar section. So this is a scholarly question, although honestly, this probably should be in the student question. It's one of the few answers most Americans probably can get. Uh, it's pretty, I, I, I even accidentally said the answer before and caught myself after it was too late. Uh, I hope you guys are having good feed. YouTube's telling me I'm having trouble talking to you guys. So if you are having problems, let me know. Uh, I would appreciate that. Um, Troy's at least giving us answers. And I'm assuming that, uh, Misfit, you're going to get the same answer. Because, yeah, it's Tommy Jeffs. I had some fun with the name. Tommy Jeffs. Little Tommy Jeffs a lot. Mark, thank you so much for answering. Yeah, Tom Jeffs. Okay. You know what, Mark, you actually got it a lot closer to what I actually wrote than what everyone else put. Uh, me just being silly over here with Tommy J, Tommy Jeffs. I call him I call him Tommy Jeff Jeff a lot, but I thought that would be too much of an inside baseball kind of thing. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question, and it is the last question on this particular card. Don't worry, we got a lot more cards going on. Uh all Americans have an unalienable right to what three things? And this card actually says, as outlined in the Declaration of Independence, all Americans have an unalienable right to what three things? And again, while you guys are answering this, because it's a little bit of a typey answer, type, 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 uh, there are... I'll remind you, the Declaration of Independence is in no way law. So these are not technically laws these rights they are inalienable and as americans we are supposed to believe that these are natural and inherited uh from nature or wherever we believe uh the rights seem to come from thomas jefferson apparently and yeah i'm seeing right answers all over the place down here it is life liberty and the pursuit of happiness this was not a hundred percent original the, you know life liberty and property comes from john locke and most founders were talking about life liberty and property the real beautiful thing about the Declaration of Independence, what really stands out to me personally about the document, is the change to the pursuit of happiness. It is the one drastic, drastic switch that Thomas Jefferson switched when uh, he wrote the Declaration of Independence, it, and making it that it's not, it's not just ownership, it's not collecting stuff, it's not having things, it's pursuing happiness to whatever way you feel you should. Now, for most Americans, that's buying things, <laughs> especially in our modern consumer society. Uh, but that isn't the only way you can pursue happiness. And this is uh, one of the most important sentences from my perspective in human history, because because of the Declaration of Independence, uh, revolutions, both political and social, have happened both domestically and abroad based on this one line. So there I go. I went on a little tangent there. It's hard for me not to tangent too much when we talk about the Declaration. I'm on. I'm a little bit of a fan of this particular document. Let's continue. I do enjoy uh, Nutella once in a while, Troy. Although, I should say my kid, I never cared for Nutella. Anyway. <laughs> I never cared for Nutella. Sorry to spoil it to you. I have a lot of family and friends who do. I like chocolate. I like peanut butter. I don't know why hazelnut doesn't do it for me. I apologize to the Nutella fans. Nutella? I don't even know how to say it. We're moving on to this next card. Now, I have a whole bunch of cards. For anyone new here, Mark, for example, uh, we have I have a bunch of different cards that we draw from every week. This week, I'm doing two of my Constitution cards. Now, as you can tell next to me, the Constitution cards don't necessarily reflect the American Revolution specifically. They are about the U.S. Constitution, though I did get them uh, at the uh, Constitution Center across from the Independence Hall in Philadelphia. So I count them, and we're learning about the founding and constitutions from then anyway. Anywho, how can a constitutional amendment passed in 1791 be ratified by the states in 1992? Mark, with two-thirds of the Senate. Okay, I'll remind you. Uh, a constitutional amendment is passed by the federal government and then goes out to the states, and then two-thirds of the states have to ratify the amendment. But this question is peculiar. Because how could a constitutional amendment that the government sent to the states for approval in 1791 not get passed until 1992? This did happen. By the way, while we're waiting for you guys to sort through this, it's a little bit more complicated, less complicated than it sounds. But when the Bill of Rights were sent for ratification, we think of the Bill of Rights as 10 amendments. There were 12 amendments sent to the states, but they only approved 10 of them. 
until 1992, when the 12th Amendment to the Constitution was finally ratified as the 27th Amendment to the Constitution. I think it's the 27th. I think. Uh, but it should have been the 12th, but when they didn't ratify the 11th, it should have been the 11th, but it's not, it's the 27th. And no one's answering, and this, yeah, okay, it's a little more complicated than most of them. It had no time limit. So, what happens is, James Madison writes the Bill of Rights and sends them to the states, as I said, and they ratified 10 of them, and we got our Bill of Rights, but one of these first 10 amendments wasn't, didn't concern rights, it concerned congressional pay. And the fact, the idea that Congress can't raise its own pay, it can raise its pay for the next session of Congress. And in the early 1990s, there was a lot of unhappiness. Some of you may remember, there was a lot of unhappiness about the Senate and House of Representatives raising their own pay. And uh, suddenly everyone realized that this, the, uh, the 12th Amendment to the Constitution, didn't have a time limit. Most amendments to the Constitution have a time limit for which it should be passed written in there. But at the time, they didn't write that in. So they sent it to the states. Some states ratified it. Some didn't. And it literally sat around for 200 years until in the early 90s, everyone was complaining about it. And they were like, okay, let's do it. And then just kind of went through. This is in my lifetime. It's the only amendment to the Constitution in my lifetime. And like, I kind of remember it. Let me know if you guys actually remember that happening. Let's move on to a question that's not so difficult. How about that? Okay. It's another one of these Constitution questions from the Constitution card. It is also a little bit of a wordy answer. I, pro I assure you we are getting to easier answers in the future. For anyone popping in, we've done a bunch of trivia, but we got a bunch more left. There's no scores, so answer if you will. Let me know you're here. The Vice President takes over. Okay, I'll read it off the card. This is an abbreviated version up here. The Vice President becomes President upon the president's death, resignation, or incapacitation. But how is a vice president replaced? How is a vice president replaced? Well, you guys are thinking about that. I'll let you know. I know some of you are new here, so I definitely remember to subscribe. Definitely hit like. That helps a lot. But subscribe on your way out. I only do trivia on Fridays, but I put out a founder of the day video every single morning of the week about a different American founder. And uh, most nights of the week, I put out either a long form discussion or uh, an interview with several authors and other people in the American Revolution industry. So if you enjoy learning about the American Revolution, please feel free to subscribe because that's all I do around here. <laughs> Waiting for answers to come through. I know it's a little bit wordy. How is a vice president replaced? I'll give you a hint. It was the 25th Amendment ratified in 1965 that actually determined this. Before 1965, they weren't. Uh, the Vice president, if the, you know, uh, if the president passed away or, or anything happened to the president, the vice president would take over and there just wouldn't be a vice president. Uh, I believe it was uh, T Tyler, John Tyler, when Tippy Canoe, a.k.a. Harrison, dies. John Tyler, first of all, it was questionable if he even just becomes president or he's just an interim president. John Tyler does just take over as president and say, no, I'm president now. But they never really figured out anything to do with the absent vice president. All right, we got some answers. Ashley, hi, welcome. Uh, the VP, who is now the president, appoints them, and Congress needs a majority vote in favor of the new VP. President nominates, House and Senate confirms. Okay, Troy and Ashley, you are absolutely right. Nominated by the Pres and approved by Congress. Congress, of course, is the House and the Senate. I know usually we think of Congress as the House of Representatives, but technically, according to the Constitution, the House and the Senate combined are the Congress. Anyway, good job. Uh, it was passed, as I said, in 1965, they finally did it, which was just in time, because in 1974, Richard Nixon got caught Richard Nixoning, Richard Nixoning, and uh, he, he left, <laughs> and then President Ford uh, nominated Nelson Rockefeller, who was governor of New York at the time, and he was approved, and that's really the only time we've run into this situation since we've established how to go about it. Let's go do another question now. All right, we're moving on to these Revolutionary War specific cards. Um, which, oh, what future president wintered with Washington and the Continental Army at Valley Forge in 1777? Which future president Ford replaced Agnew? 
Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, well, okay. Uh, I studied the American Revolution, so forgive me if my uh, 1970s history is not up to date. I thought it was, did Agnew resign and then Nixon, like, pardoned him and then resigned? And then Ford took over? I don't remember the exact order. Um, brain went brr, brr, brr. Uh, couldn't tell you the answer to save my life. Uh, Monroe and Madison. Well, I'll tell you what, Mark, you've come to the right place if you like American Revolution, because you're all over it. Uh, James Monroe was a child, essentially, when he joined the Continental Army. Uh, he was like 16, 17 when he joined. By the time they get to Valley Forge, he's already been severely wounded in uh, in the uh, in New Jersey. I think it was, I think it was Princeton. I, I don't. It was between Tr Trenton and Princeton. Might have been. Can't remember if it was Trenton or Princeton, but that those few days when they crossed the Delaware and went into Jersey, Monroe was severely wounded as a teenager and ends up being uh, fixed. Mark, thank you, Trenton. Thank you for uh... when I do videos about about the Revolution, I, I do some studying first, so it's fresh in my mind. <laughs> but yeah, Monroe ends up serving the army for most of the war and then joins politics, uh, gets a law degree, and yada yada yada. Things happen. Actually runs against James Madison for U.S. Senate and wins because the Anti-Federalists in Virginia were very unhappy with Mr. Madison's little constitution. Sorry, I'm a little out of focus there. I, I waved my finger too strongly at the camera. Let's move on to our last question on the card before we do our big party. Uh, oh, no, before we do... Oh, that's right. I've added more questions because I'm always trying to make this better. I am really blurry. I apologize for that. What happened here? In Annapolis, Maryland, on December 23rd, 1783. What is it that happened in Annapolis, Maryland, 1783? Let's see, where is my camera? Oh. Okay, no camera. Anyway, let me know. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to pop over here. I'm going to hit a button so that I clear up. I'm waiting to find out what happened in Annapolis, Maryland. On December 23rd, 1783, I'm going to hit this button, and then hit it again, and now I look better. There you go. See? It's taken me about a year and a half, but I figured out how to use the computer <laughs> to do these kinds of things. Go back to trivia over here, and I see some answers from And Troy, uh, Nixon resigned about a year after Ford was VP, if I remember. Oh, oh, is that how? Did they? I didn't realize. I didn't realize Ford actually served as VP. I thought... Uh, I don't care. If it's after 1826, I really have very little interest in it. I know that sounds bad, and that's not really true. I do try and keep up with modern politics. As the founders taught us, it is our duty, uh, our civic duty, to pay attention. Washington resigned his commission. Oh, you mean like Richard Nixon? Whammy. <laughs> okay. uh, British soldiers left Maryland. Washington resigns. Well... Sorry to tell you, Ashley, the other answers are correct. Washington resigned December 23rd, 1783. He appears before Congress. I believe it was Arthur St. Clair who accepted his resignation at the Continental Congress. That's where the Congress was currently hanging out. And he continued home. And I am under the impression, perhaps mistakenly, that he is able to reach home by Christmas and celebrates Christmas at home with Martha for the first time in eight years. When he left for the Second Continental Congress, he thought he'd be home before that. I assure you. So there we go. That's a lot of fun. Why don't we pop over here and do uh, the one. Now, I've added these next questions. And this question is, who were the signers of the Articles of Confederation from New Jersey? I'm going to give you a time limit. Whammy, one minute. And there are only two of them. One of them I discussed this week. Sorry, Mark. Again, Mark, I think this might be your first time here, which is awesome. Thank you for coming, but you missed this week's founders, so it might be a little more difficult. The other one was a signer of the Declaration of Independence who was also in uh, 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 president of Princeton. Let's see. Carl Carrollton is good. Charles Carroll of Carrollton, but Carroll was from Maryland. He was Catholic, and, and there was a strong contingent of Catholics in Maryland, which is fun fact. Makes your answer wrong, but I, I appreciate it. I love that you know who the Carols are. <laughs> um, 
you've come to the right place. Uh, we got about 15 seconds. Again, president of Princeton, a sign of the decoration, a doctor who died in battle that we discussed earlier this week, the only active member of the Continental Congress to die while serving in the Continental Congress. Time's up. Maybe a minute isn't enough. It was though up the last two weeks. For, last week we did the signers of, from Delaware, and we got that in a minute, and there were three of them. So I'm a little surprised <laughs> that New Jersey was so tough. But let's take a look. First we have, that's right, Ashley, a little bit late, but John Witherspoon, absolutely, president of Princeton University, uh, one of the few holy men, I believe, to sign the uh, the major documents. There were a handful of them. Oh, but he was president of Princeton at the time. And the other one is Nathaniel Scudder. Scudder is a very unknown person. Uh, while Yorktown, as we discussed this week, while Yorktown was going on down in Virginia, there were still battles or skirmishes, I, su I should say, all over the colonies uh, or states. Uh, one was in New Jersey. Nathaniel Scudder was killed, unfortunately, in a meaningless battle in 1781, just as Yorktown's going on. Uh, and he was an active member of the Continental Congress, the only active member of the Congress to die in battle. Okay, guys, so we're coming up to our fun conclusion, and I know we don't want it to end. That's okay, because the next thing's going to take 20 minutes. At least that's the time limit we have. For those of you who are new here, what we're about to do is try and name 243 American founders. They are members of the legislative branch. Now, I do want to note, we've been doing this since November, and just last week did it correctly for the first time. Can we do it again twice in a row? I don't know. We're going to do it this week and next week, and I'm hoping if we can do it either this week or next week, that's two out of three. It means we got it. It means last week wasn't a fluke. Now, if this sounds daunting, it is. Just so you know the rules, all I need is the last name. Only type one name at a time because I have to keep up with you guys, and that's become part of the challenge, is not repeating names too many times. That being said, if you don't think a name's been said, or you think I miss it, say it again. By all means, better to say it twice than not at all. We need 243 names. We are looking for the legislative branch of the American Revolution. That means any signer of the, any delegate to the First Continental Congress, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, a signer of the Articles of Confederation, a delegate to the Constitutional Convention, or a member of the first United States House of Representatives or United States Senate in 1789. It's a lot of people. If you think they had to do with the legislative branch, let me know. I'm going to bounce over here. I am going to click this button because this is actually the game, as I said. And I will scroll down for those of you who are new here. We have a lot of names. It gives us some hints, but oh, we just want names. Now, that last, uh, I will say, Ashley just wrote a name up there. We're definitely going to want to type that one back in. And the way I like to start is I am about seven seconds ahead of you guys. Uh, you, as soon as I see someone type in a name, I'm going to hit play quiz and start typing. I'm not going to stop for 20 minutes. It kills my wrist, but it's absolutely worth it because it's a lot of fun. That being said, I'm going to take a sip of water while I wait for you guys to name what I like to call the Big Six. Mark, you're new here. You're the only one who doesn't know, probably. The Big Six are what most people call the Founding Fathers. There we go. The main names, uh, both Ashley and Misfit have typed in Hamilton. One of those names, Hamilton, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Monroe, Madison. There we go. J, that's most of the big six. Franklin, there's the last of the six, I think. Uh, Witherspoon, well played, Ashley. Don't want to forget that. Scudder, yeah, we don't want to forget the names we've already done. Uh, Lee, absolutely, that's a few of them. Carol, Chase, Floyd, William Floyd of Long Island, my closest signer to my house. Klingon, Huntington, oh, Huntington, easy for me to type. Livermore, Mason, absolutely, Mark, Dana, Pendleton, Paca, Dalton, and don't be intimidated, Mark, we've done this a lot of times, so if you see random names you've never seen, I don't even know everyone's story, even though I've been writing articles about the American Revolution for uh, three and a half years, once a day, for three and a half years, Smith, Sinickson, Lovell, Page, Dana, did we do? We did Dana, that's okay. Level we just did. I love how you guys are on the same page. Martin, got it. Holton, Hos excuse me, Hosmer, Ames, 
Ingersoll Mercer. Gail Mifflin is absolutely right, Mark. Welcome to the team. You've absolutely come to the right place. Finding Paige. Uh, do we do Paige? We must have done Paige. Benson. Uh, Sylvester. Giles. Gilman. Sumter. Hawthorne. That is how you spell it. Man, I always think you spell it wrong, Ashley, but you get it right every time. Collins, do, Collins we didn't get. Born Hartley. Uh, oh, so, Ashley, I typed in heart. Now, and that worked. So, Hartley also works. But is there another heart with something in front of it? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Pickney. Okay, Mark, it's pink with a C-K, knee, N-E-Y. Took me so long to learn how to spell that name. Hi, <laughs> sir. Sevier. Sherman, Sherman, Ashley, but is there another name that sounds exactly like that, who's super important that we get every time and haven't done yet? Conti, Sini, Livermore, I think we got, yeah. Uh, Nathaniel Gorham, Committee of Postponed Parts, super important. Brown, Langworthy, oh, here come the Worths, Bloodworth, <laughs> Broom, that's right, Ashley, DeHart, Randolph. That's right, Mark. Absolutely, Randolph. That's two correct answers. Ellsworth, McKean, if I can spell it, McKean, Wentworth, Thompson. Thank you, Troy. We were talking about him earlier today. Wads, Wadsworth, Reed, Sherman. There it is, Troy. There you go. You all, you all got my hand at the same time. Lynch, Pendleton. Did we do that yet? Pendleton. We must have done that. That's all right. Better to say it twice than that. Oh, Hayward. Johnson, Johnston. We've learned a lot of tricks, as you can tell, Mark, how to how to fold names together in order to say 243 in 20 minutes. Uh, House, Houston, Livingston, absolutely the Livingstons are huge. Blount, Hudson, Bland, Harvey, Marchant is two, I think. Davy, Williams, Williams, Son, Hopkins. Hopkins son. See, that's one of the tricks we learned, isn't it, actually? <laughs> Dayton, Hawkins, Drayton. Absolutely, Dayton, Drayton. Another trick. Dickinson, Smith is a correct answer. If we have not, we must have already typed it. Cooper. Did we do Baldwin? Did I miss that? Oh, I missed it. Ooh, uh oh, I'm off my game. Partridge, Clark, with not wife. I've been scolded on. Cushing, absolutely. We just talked about Cushing the other day. Carol. Oh, I think we did that kind of early this time, actually. Payne. Quipple. Look at you guys on the same page. Two of the three of us spelling it wrong. That's right. Penn. Uh, Borum of Brooklyn. Yes. Gwinnett. Button. Oh. Okay. My Too fast for my viewer. Button Gwinnett. Ellery. Most expensive signature in America. Elmer. Randolph, I think we got that one earlier. Yes, Gary, not Jerry, I think. Wilson, <laughs> Nelson. Man, you guys are on exact. Are you guys like looking at the same cheat sheet? Because you keep uh, Ashley and, and Miss Fee are doing it exactly the same time. Rush, by the way, Ashley, you might have missed it. Uh, Colonel is Misfit. Uh, Braxton, she keeps changing her name on us. <laughs> oh, Hancock, yeah. Bartlett, Henry, absolutely. Henry, is there, did we already do it? There's another, sounds a lot like Henry, but with something at the beginning. Walker, White, Aesop, Alsop. Someone told me, someone commented on my video I did a, a few weeks back that it's Alsop. I think he said he was from Kentucky. That's how they pronounced it out there. I understand it to be Aesop, like the fables, but what do I know? I read them in books and get them wrong all the time. Colonel Misfit, that's right. Mick Henry, there it is. Tillman. It's Matthew Tillman, who I actually was going to do the other day, but uh, didn't. <laughs> Ward, Trumbull, uh, Thatcher, Tucker. All right, where are we? Oh, we're only three minutes in, and we've gotten 140. How are we only three minutes in? Oh, I'm behind. Okay, Broom, I think we got Broom. Butler, excuse me, Bassett. Foster, I think we no, okay, we didn't. Stone, you guys know better than me. Uh, Mason, I think we got earlier. Did I spell it right? Yep. Wingate. Please, Mark, don't be uh, intimidated. You were getting a lot right. <laughs> uh, a lot of first-timers don't get nearly as many right as you got right off the bat. Langdon. 
Climber, Gadsden, Livermore, I think we did a few times now, Payne we did, Dwayne, nice, uh, Rutledge, do we do, nope, that's at least one if not two, Gunn, Hughes, Bedford, Hayward, I think we got, Lewis we did not get, ooh, there's another really big name we didn't get, Gunn, we just did, oh, you guys are all on the same page, Lynch, it's got Lynch's pen, I think we got. You, there it is, Morris, Ashley. That's like 20. Jackson uh, shouldn't technically count because he was a uh, secretary hired, but neither should Charles Thompson. There they are. Houston, I think we did. Oh, um, oh McKean, I think we got. Yes, Middleton is two. Arthur and Henry Biddle. Is fun. Collins. Nope. Must have done it. It's yes. That's correct. Galloway. A loyalist, but he was at that first Continental Congress with the Galloway Plan of Union. Telfair. Uh, Klingon we did. Sky. Oh. Skyler. King. Rodney. Yates. Humphreys. Lang We're too fast for my computer. Humphreys. Do we do? Oh, hump Reese. There we do. You spelled it right. I spelled it wrong. Lansing. Absolutely disappeared. We just did that. I just uh, did him last week. We just talked about him. Ramsey. Ramsey with an A-Y. Ramsey. I don't know why I can't get that one in. We must have already done it. Harvey. We did. Yes. Mac Lay. Dickinson, thank you, Mark. Don't want to forget Dickinson. Did we get him already? Oh, we got him. Still, great. Holton. Speaking of Dickinson, I just had to, we just canceled yesterday. I was supposed to interview um Dr. Jane from the Dickinson Papers, Hansen. But we had a little bit of a scheduling conflict. We'll put that out. Actually talking about one of the Rodneys. Caesar Rodney is famous. His brother, Thomas Rodney, not so famous. Hosmer. I got to keep typing. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Arnett. Uh, Bates. Computer doesn't like me today. I'm um, keen. I think we tried. Stevens. No, he was a general in the war, and this is the legislative branch. So that's definitely a founder, but not on this quiz. Blair. Tell fair. If I spell it right, tell fair, even though I think we already did it. Yeah. Caswell. Absolutely. Patterson. Had. Walleter, yes. Pierce, did we do? Nope. Sturgis, like the motorcycle show. Mifflin, I think we did. Yes. Griffin, Trumbull. We do. We must have done Trumbull. We already did Spate, I think. Fitz Simmons. One of the Catholics. The Catholics signed the Constitution. Ingersoll. Izzard. Dewar, Dyer, Harrison. There it is right up top. Reed. We did the reads. Alexander. Liked video stream. Thank you, Alexander. Reed. Stockton. Nope. Taylor. Harrison. We just did Harrison. That's all right. Better to do it twice than not. All Walton. Rutledge. Rut. Ledge, as always, cat coming in the room. Uh, Simpson. Uh, there is no George Simpson. There is a Southie Simpson, which I can talk about at the end if you remind me. Stanton, Bannis, Bannister, uh, Grayson, Black, I don't think is a correct answer. My computer's going kind of slow. Oh, don't poop out of me, computer. Uh oh. Oh no. Computer. Computer. Oh no. Oh wait, time out, guys. Oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. I thought my computer was going to poop out. Computer died on us one time, guys. It was awful. But this time we have almost 15 minutes left. We're way ahead. Okay, black. White. No, we did white. Brown. Parker. Walker, I think we did Walker. We did not do Robert Joe. Cadwallader, we did. That's all right. Van 
Rensselaer. Thank you for the van. Is there another van or something of that nature? Bannister, I think we got. Here, we're slowing down a little bit. We got plenty of time. Okay, we have a First Continental Congressman from Pennsylvania. We have a declaration signer from Pennsylvania. We got to get that. Strong. There it is. Uh, okay, let's get that declaration signer from Pennsylvania. It's Congressman. This person we got last week, Ross. There it is. Thank you, Troy. Sevier, I think we got. That's right. Van Dyke is that other van. Sturgis Rhodes. Rhodes. I think it's ADS. Yeah. Um, McClurg. Rhodes becomes a loyalist. Um, there's McClurg. Great job. Oh, Patriot Leader from the Stand Back Congress. Technically shouldn't be here because loses his mind. It doesn't do much with the revolution, but Sini. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. YouTube is not showing my picture, even though it says excellent condition, and everything seems fine on my end. Did I hit a button to ruin it? Nope, still streaming. All right, keep typing. <laughs> Coles. Uh, Lawrence. Lawrence. Wilson. All right, I guess my computer's not happy with us today. I'm not sure why. Probably because it's hot in here. I, I have to turn my AC unit off because it's too loud. And I am now really sweaty. Pink knee. Uh, we did pink knee a little earlier. That's right. Otis, that's right. Thank you, uh, uh, Misfit. Martin. Oh. Okay, okay. I'm missing some people from New York. Um, Wisner. There it is. That's what I was trying to give a hint for. Wisner. Blount, I think we got. Low, I think we got. We definitely need it. Okay, no, I guess we didn't. Uh, Jennifer, good job. St. Clair, nice. Partridge, I think we got. Matthews, two T's. Matthews, one T. One T, okay, weird. <laughs> um, Got some First Continental Congressman from New Jersey. Constitutional Convention Delegate from New Jersey. Breerly, another important committee of postponed parts at the Constitutional Convention. Uh, Sedgwick, Rain, Wincoop. I'm sorry if you guys can't see me. It's telling me, it's showing me that you can't, but you're still answering, so I'm running with it. Uh, Kinsey, Muhlenberg. Oh, must have gotten Muhlenberg Hudson. Gotten it. Scott Grout Leonard. I'm going to try Muhlenberg again. Okay, we must have gotten it. You can see me, Ashley. Thank you for letting me know. Sullivan is right, if I can spell right. Yeah, I don't know why it's making it seem like you can't see me. It's Everything's being weird today. Maybe it's my computer. Maybe it's overheating. I thought it was fine. But need to get a good one. Okay. Oh, don't slow down. Now we're 232. Okay. Okay, now it's catching up. Uh, good Hugh. Folsom. I think we did Folsom. Born, I think we did too. Crane. Bassett. You. Yep. You. Uh, Kinsey, we just did. Sumter, I think we did. Uger, Hayward. Okay, let's see. We need what is that? Nine more. With plenty of time. First Continental Congress from Connecticut. Okay, Izzard. I think we got the Budin. No, I don't think we got Budin. No, Burke. Nice. Edinus Burke. Greerly. We just did committee post one parts. Really important. Connecticut. Let's see, Stockton, we got Vining, I think we got earlier, and Cushing, I think we got pretty early on. All right, we got 12 minutes. We got plenty of time to get these last handful of people, so let's do it. Let's take our time. Okay, we need a Declaration of Independence signer from New Hampshire. Same last name as an old man who just played on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And by old man, I mean in hockey terms, not in real life. Dyer, Dean... There's Dean. Okay, Goldsboro. There's a New Jersey guy. Jones, I think. No, he was a Maryland guy, wasn't he? Never mind. 
I take that back. Take it back. Declaration signer over here. Dean again. Try it again. Nope. We got Silas a while ago. We have Rhode Island. We have Georgia. We need one person from New Hampshire. A Declaration of Independence signer from New Hampshire whose last name is shared with a, an older hockey player on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, we got North Carolina. We got Delaware. We are missing someone from Connecticut. A declaration signer from Connecticut? Come on, guys. We need a declaration signer from Connecticut. We've got William Williams, Huntington, and Roger Sherman. This is a name we said earlier. We, we, we got his son correct on the U.S. Founding Fathers. His son was in George Washington's cabinet, took over as Secretary of Treasury, and has exactly the same name. Took over for Alexander Hamilton as Secretary of Treasury. Uh, Thornton, that's right. Bartlett, I think we got. That's right. Thornton, we there it is. Okay, so New Hampshire we're done with, I think, if I can scroll. Yes, we are. We've got Delaware. Again, this Constitution signer. Okay, if you guys listen to the first album from the band uh, Vampire Weekend, there is a song called This Guy's Name. Blah, blah, don't you know that it's insane? That is, I've given you great hints. <laughs> the best hint is you've already said this guy's name because you said Junior, his son. Oh, Bland. Did we do Bland? I mean, we did Bland. My computer's so slow right now. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, no, not Bland. Do we do more? Okay. More, not less. I like it. Okay, we have a Constitutional Convention delegate from New Jersey who did not sign the document. Okay, uh, his name sounds like the guy who started... Uh, it's the opposite of the guy who... I don't want to give it away. Uh, MLK Jr. Uh, it's like his first two names. But spun around. <laughs> there it is, Misfit. Wolcott. Don't you know it's insane? It's insane. It's it's a good song. You should look into it. Vampire Weekend, the first album. It's really good. All their albums are good. Um. Okay. Okay. We only need two names. We only need two names. Okay. Again. Uh, uh Doctor. Blah blah blah. There it is. Martin. Didn't we do that before though? Do we do it already? Luther Martin? The name is Luther Martin, right? Why? Why? Am I overlooking it? Is it already there and I'm overlooking it? Oh, no, I'm an idiot. Luther Martin was from Delaware. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Alexander Martin? Where is Luther Martin from? Luther Martin is from Maryland. I'm a moron. I apologize. Okay, we have 10 minutes to get two names. We are going to do this. Feel it in my bones. Now, Houston spent the old time away. There it is, William Houston. Now that I've given you terrible hints. And we are down to one last person. Let's find him. Where are you? Where are you, mysterious American founder? Brearley, I will type in, though I have said committee of postponed parts twice tonight, so I know we did Brearley. Um, I'm trying to find this missing person. <laughs> Somewhere on a milk carton is this American founder, whose name we're trying to know. Um, we are definitely going to get this. <laughs> I just, if I could find the person. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Oh, it's a First Continental Congress delegate from New York. Brearly, we did. Above New Jersey, New York. Okay, a First Continental Congress delegate. He was... Oh, am I thinking of Asa? No, I'm not thinking of Asa. I just... Oh, man, I just did a video about this person. And I'm going to again in a few weeks because I'm doing my series on the First Continental Congress. Um, it's not low. We got low right here. He would be a loyalist. This guy was elected with Henry Wisner from 
Orange Town. He did the Orange Town resolution. Sorry, Misfit Borms, right here. I don't know if you can see above my head. Yeah. Uh, he did the. There it is, Misfit. There it is, Herring. Wow. Wow. We dominated this week. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm going to screenshot this before I do anything because that's amazing. Honestly, if I'm disappointed in anything, it's that I typed it in one second late because we did it in less than 10 minutes. So that's pretty great. I was going to say we're going to end early this week because we finished with 10 minutes left, but apparently, uh, no, we're right on time. I guess we got behind because I talked about the Declaration of Independence too much. That's what usually happens uh, whenever the Declaration itself comes up. Thank you, everyone who played. I know some people are popping in just now and we're just finishing up, but definitely like and subscribe. We play trivia every Friday. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I talk about the American Revolution all the rest of the week. Uh, I don't, Mark, if you're still hanging around, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, I put out a Founder of the Day every morning, a new video. I write an article and publish it on my website, founderoftheday.com, and publish a video about that person every morning, which is new. I only started doing the same person on video each day as the article. It used to be I would wrap it up the following week, but now I'm doing them both every day and uh thursday i do a live wrap up that we can ask questions about any articles or videos i made and uh monday tuesday wednesday at night i usually do an interview with someone who studies the american revolution in some fashion so it's a lot of fun definitely subscribe if you're new here i uh, definitely hit like either way because you really liked coming by thank you so much uh troy yes it was fun you learned a bit well i'm happy we can learn a bit this time <laughs> I'm sure some of my other videos are more informative. This one's more about asking you questions, but we do like to learn here. We're a team. That's what's fun about it. So, uh, Mr. Morris. Oh, Mark, you are still still here. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't know what it is. YouTube, sometimes YouTube does this. That's one of the reasons I used to shoot my interviews live, but one of the reasons I stopped is because YouTube can be finicky from time to time. So, uh, instead of relying on them, I, you know... Most of my videos, as I was saying, Mark, most of my videos, I put out a different founder every morning. I write an article and publish a video about a founder every day of the week. Uh, and uh, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I put long form stuff out. Usually it is a, um, I do a lot of interviews recently uh, during the week. So definitely subscribe if you're new here because we have fun. Uh, you guys, thank you so much. And we end trivia with, a while ago we came up with this. It is one of John Adams's properties. Peacefield. So I am going to let you go with Peacefield, and I will be back on Monday where I will continue my series on the delegates to the First Continental Congress, and we'll be talking about Connecticut. So that should be a grand old time. Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you had fun, and Peacefield.